Good morning, ICF Church family, and welcome to our Sunday morning worship service live over Facebook and YouTube. And we're so thankful to be able to join together in this way and thankful for the other opportunities that we have each week to connect, even though we are uh, scattered out and spaced out at this time. So welcome, and I'd like to start us with a word of scripture. This is from Psalm 146. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord while I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not trust in princes, in mortal man in whom there is no salvation. His spirit departs. He returns to the earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. How blessed is he who has the help of the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. This psalm reminds us that God is above all, that he is sovereign, that he's above man, that he's above governments, that he's above all the things and circumstances that we face and that we can trust in Him. In light of that, let's go to Him and worship Him today in spirit and in truth. Let us pray. Lord, thank You for this day and this time together. Thank You for the technology that connects us. And Lord, we pray that everything we do here today will be centered on You and that will bring honor and glory to Your name. Lord, we pray that by joining together in this way, we will be challenged and encouraged for the week to come. And we pray, Lord, that we will know you more and realize your work in our lives more and more each day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, A.J. Ford will give us our announcements. Good morning, ICF Church family. We are so excited to be with you this morning. Please continue to watch Facebook and check your email to stay up to date with things going on in the life of the church. There's new and exciting things happening each week. A ladies Coffee will be Tuesday at 4.45 p.m. via Zoom. For more information concerning that, please contact Elena. Men's Morning Brew will be Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. via Zoom. For more information about that, see Mike Miller. Wednesday Midweek Word will be at 6.30 p.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. Another exciting thing is, is ICF Kids goes online Fridays at 10 a.m. right here on Facebook and YouTube. I know that I have been blessed by the songs that we've had the opportunity to share in in these broadcasts, and I just want to uh, thank those singers for continuing to use your talents uh, for your church and for the Lord during this time. I know it's difficult to uh, to lead songs and worship in that way. And I uh, just thank you for that. And let's uh, join our hearts now in song as we, as we sing out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
So we put out our praise, put out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we put out our praise to you, oh, prepare to go to the Lord together in prayer, I want to mention a couple of special prayer requests. One is to continue to remember Miss Helen Gillen as she's had some problems recently with her eyes and she's continuing to, uh, to work on that and to go see, uh, seek out medical uh, advice and help on that and medication. And also remember Rodney and Teresa Walls and uh, a baby girl in their care. And we just want to pray. They're hoping to be able to travel very soon and to, uh, to get more treatment. And so um, just remember uh, that family in a special way today and in the week to come. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this church family. And Lord, we especially, Lord, just lift our hearts for those special prayer requests that we have mentioned. Lord, we pray that you will provide health and healing and provision and your perfect timing in those situations and in the other situations around the church that, that are not mentioned here. Lord, especially we remember those that, 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 are on each, that are on hearts that are very personal prayer requests. And Lord, we ask you to touch each heart, each mind with your healing and with your restoration. Lord, we join together in prayer for the world right now. We join together in prayer and asking you, Lord, that uh, this COVID-19 crisis pandemic will be over soon. Lord, that you will heal the sick, that you will bring about order in the, in the world. Lord, your order. And Lord, that you will show yourself faithful. Lord, that you will show yourself loving, that you will show yourself perfect that your majesty will be known throughout the earth. And Lord, we present ourselves as your people and we say, here we are, Lord. Send us to that work. And Lord, we know that we have to have the Holy Spirit to do that work. And we rely on your power by and through the Holy Spirit and, and, and through the Holy Spirit alone. And Lord, we pray that, that you will empower us to that work, that you will send us on our way, Lord, that we will be about your mission to make disciples of all nations. Lord, we thank you for this time. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you. And we thank you that we are free to worship you. And Lord, we pray that that freedom not be taken away. And Lord, we pray against those who would try to take it away. And Lord, we pray that you will help us not to fear, to be confident in you, and to go about sharing your love and your gospel to the world around us. Lord, we lift up each family represented in our church. We lift up each situation, each circumstance. We pray together. We pray for our church specifically that you will complete the good work that you have begun in it. Lord, that your name will be known because of International Christian Fellowship Church in San Pedro Sula, Honduras. We pray for the city of San Pedro, the country of Honduras especially, Lord, with the quarantines, everything. But we thank you that we have seen you move during this pandemic, that we feel your presence stronger than ever, and that you're leading us step by step. Help us not to fear what tomorrow holds or what the unknown may be. But Lord, just keep following you step by step. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we go into our time of worship and the giving and receiving of tithes and offerings, we just want to remind you of a couple of ways that are available to you to worship in this way during this time. 
I want to remind you about our online giving option, which is available through our website, icfsanpedro.org. You just go to the giving tab there, and you'll also get uh, one or two emails each week that have that link and encourage you to give. If that's not an option for you, then we just invite you uh, to set aside the portion uh, of the Lord's of how He has blessed you each week and be ready to offer that in person when we're able to meet together again as a church family. So we've been studying the early church in Acts chapters 3 and chapter 4, and we're going to continue that study this morning in Acts chapter 4, uh, verses 23 through 30. And we've seen the church th grow during this time through the preaching of God's Word and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we've seen how the power of the Holy Spirit is a must that the church really can't truly grow without the Holy Spirit. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to empower God's people to make disciples, and that's how the church grows. And we've seen that the Holy Spirit works in, in, in this growing church, and that is characterized by God's people caring and doing and making more about what God says and what God has called them to do than what man or men or the world thinks. This growing church, we've also seen it face opposition. And last week we saw that the growing church is unstoppable in the face of opposition because the, un, the growing church is a movement of the true and living God. See, when God's true church grows, it's not of man's doing. It's of God's doing. And His divine will and His divine ways and His divine power will not be thwarted or held back. He will do what He purposes to do. And we're going to see that reflected today in the message. We're going to see a very clear detail of this growing church today in that they are a praying church. This church, this growing church is a praying church. Years ago, a missionary named D.E. Host wrote about some things he experienced while working in China. He was working in two villages at, at one point, and he lived and worked and kind of pastored in one village, and then they had started to work in another village that was, that was some way, ways away or way apart. And Mr. Host found that the village that he was working in was doing okay. But that village that, that he was that they had started the work in that he was responsible for but wasn't there every day he didn't live in that village, it was doing wonderful. It was doing much better than the village where he worked. And this puzzled him. And he thought and he prayed and he sought the Lord and, and he began to think, you know, is it is it me? Is it Am I doing something wrong or am I, am I trying too hard? And he, and he kept seeking the Lord all the while rejoicing in what God was doing in that village. And he testified that after some time, the Lord gave him the answer. And the answer was that the village that he was living in, in fact, he was doing great things there and spending a lot of time there, counseling, preaching, teaching, but he was spending more time praying for the other village than the village he was working in. He came to the conclusion after that that prayer is the priority of disciple making. That prayer is the number one factor in the movement of God. We're going to see that in some ways today. And we're going to draw out some principles from the early church. And, and we're going to find how important prayer is. We're really going to find some really good principles on how to pray and how, uh, how God uh, wants us to pray and, and how we can enjoy a prayer life, a strong prayer life as we are on our journey with the Lord. We're going to see the early church that they prayed in God's Word, that they prayed their experience, and that they prayed their heart's desire. 
So let's dig in into the scriptures. Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 23 this morning. So when they had been released, so you'll remember that Peter and John had been uh, had been uh, brought in by the council for preaching the name of Jesus, for a healing that was done in the name of Jesus, that, that had happened in the name of Jesus, and, 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 and how people had gotten saved, and this council of religious leaders had threatened them and let them go. And this is where we pick up that when they had been released, they went to their own companions, that is the the group of believers at that time seems to be who, who Luke seems to be talking about here. And they reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. And when they, when they that's, that's the, the larger group, heard this, they lifted their voices to God with one accord. Now you say, what are they doing here? Are they about to sing? Are they, are they shouting? Or what are they doing? Well, it, from, the, from the original language and the context, they're praying. They're lifting their voices to God, and likely this was one person's prayer that is recorded here, maybe on, on behalf of the group or maybe as a part of the group, but they're praying. They lifted their voices to God with one accord and said, O oh Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of our father David your servant said, Why did the Gentiles rage and the people devised futile things. The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against His Christ. So, Peter and John get back from being threatened, from being in this council. They come and report and what happens? The group breaks out in prayer. And we see very specifically that they prayed in unity. It says they lifted up in one accord and that they prayed God's word. This, O oh Lord, it is you who made the heaven and the earth. That's a quote from Psalm 146 that we read this morning. And then down a few, a few uh, there in verse 25, where he says, Who by the Holy Spirit, through the mouth of our Father, our servant, our Father, your servant David, said, Why did the Gentiles rage and the people devise futile things? That's a quote from Psalm 2. They are praying God's Word. And I'd like for us to look at that and see how powerful that is. Because we, we can take this as, as a principle that we can follow by seeing it in the early church. And in fact, most of us know this. In fact, we know that, that we should pray in accordance with God's Word. And we even know about praying, using the Scriptures and, and those things with God, and especially the Psalms. And that's what we see the early church here doing. But why is that so powerful? And why should we do that? Well, I'd like to look at a few things here. And so we should pray and we should start with God's Word. This is a good place to start. And a, and a reason that it's good to use God's Word, one reason, is that it, it brings us in this moment or this place of recognizing God's sovereignty and telling Him that. And by doing that in prayer, we're reminding ourselves that God is over everything, that God is in complete control, that we don't understand circumstances, and we see as in a, as in a mirror dimly lit, we see it as, as through just a little window, but God knows the whole picture. And that's what we see uh, this, this early church do. They're proclaiming to God, we know you're above all. And that's what we should do. That's a good place to start. The second reason that it's really good is that we can. it helps us to listen to God. Because it helps us to take His Word and, and, and we start to talk about God's Word with God, the author of the Word. Isn't that cool? And then we, we listen. Because we're hearing from Him every time we look at Him and we're interacting with with the Holy Spirit in a special way when we're engaged in intentional prayer. And so it gives us the opportunity for God to speak into our hearts and our minds and our spirit for us to make sense of our situations. And then as we as we as we get on this good ground of God's sovereignty and then we then we listen, then we start to process. We start to process God's word with the circumstances going around, or circumstances going on around us, and we begin 
to make sense of why God begins to open our eyes to things that are going on and direct us. And we see that here. The, 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 the early church is very much making sense of the things that they've seen and heard with God's word. This, this, this persecution, this first persecution that they've faced, that they've experienced, Peter and John faced, it's like, man, it makes sense, God. It makes sense because you told us these things were going to happen so long ago in your word. And maybe, maybe, and maybe I'm, 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 I'm taking a little liberty here, but, but maybe we see this idea that, that these Psalms, well, they didn't really make sense before, but now it makes sense. This Psalm, too, that talks about this Messiah and people coming against, they, you know, they're, how was that ever going to happen? And now they see God's Word coming alive and they're interacting with God in, in prayer. So, principles we see here from praying God's Word, the early church prayed God's Word, we should pray God's Word, is to get on firm ground. That's number one. That's the truth. The truth of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Jesus says He is the truth. All truth comes from the Father. We know all of that from Scripture. So we get ourselves on firm ground with the truth of God and that He's over all and above all. Then we survey, we survey the situation around us in light of God's Word and we simply talk about the, the things going on with God using His Word. And then the third is that we process. As that conversation goes, God begins to help us sort through and think through what is going on in light of His Word. And as, that, as we do that, then we end with listening. You can practice these, you, you can practice these principles these are principles for praying God's Word that will work in your life and my life. They will work and help us make sense of our circumstance. But in order to pray God's Word, you, you know what I'm about to say, in order to pray God's Word, we've got to be in God's Word. We have to know God's Word. You know, I talk so much about and, and encourage uh, you guys and, and others uh, uh, that, that I meet with and know to memorize Scripture. It's so good to memorize and give God these tools, give the Holy Spirit these tools to use in our heart and mind. And that will definitely help us in prayer. The second principle we see from the early church in this example is that the early church prayed their experience, what they had seen God do. We might say they prayed their testimony. And as we just, we just spoke about a minute ago, as that processing happens, our experience and our circumstance come into play, but we're able to look back on how God has worked in our lives. Now remember, we started with God's Word and, and praying God's Word, and we see that here, so we're not in any way talking about any experience that would lead us away from God's Word. It, it, it's experience that lines up with God's Word, and it will line up with God's Word because the Holy Spirit who is living and guiding in us is, is the, the, the triune God, part of the triune God, who wrote this book, who gave us His words, who, who lived on a life as Jesus, who is God the Father. It's all the same. So as we walk with God and learn with Him, it will line up with His word. Look at verse 27. They continue in this prayer, for truly in this city there were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, Here's who was gathered together. Both Herod, Pontius Pilate, along with the Gentiles, and the people of Israel to do whatever your hand, God, and your purpose predestined to occur. So again, they're taking God's word and they're, and, and they're making sense. That, that uh, part of that... Um, those psalms that they had quoted said the nations are in uproar the, na the nations devise against God and, and they're saying here it is Herod the so called leader of the Jews who was, who was, who was really not, not a, a, a Jew at least um, religiously and then Pontius Pilate the Roman leader 
Peter, and then Gentiles, other people, and even God's own people, the people of Israel, all conspired against Jesus. Now here's what's interesting. This early church, these apostles, they had seen this happen. This was their experience. This is just not very much time at all after these things had happened, after Jesus had been crucified. And so as they prayed God's word, now they're praying their experience. They said, we've seen this happen and it corresponds with your word. It actually, these are things that actually happen. This is them praying their experience in light of God's Word. And as we also should do that. So as we pray, we should talk to God about what has actually happened in our lives. And then we should remind ourselves and reaffirm to God that he, we know He is in control. As we see here in verse 28, they say that even these guys, because of what those Psalms says, even these groups, they know were under the control of God, that, that nothing happens apart from the knowledge and the foreknowledge of God. We know that God is in total control. So what does this mean? This praying our experience eh, along with the Word of God. Well, one, one thing it means is, is we need to get specific. I think sometimes we really beat around the bush, if I can use that terminology with God. And by that, I just mean that we talk around the issues sometimes. You, you've probably, I know I, I have done this in the past and find myself doing it at times. I pray in these real generalized ways. And I just pray these prayers like, God, you know everything. And that's great. And we've seen that here. And you're above all. So Lord, just your will be done. But you know, if you have that kind of those kind of real generalized conversations with your spouse or your close friend or your or your close family member or someone, you don't with a close relationship, you don't talk like that. You don't talk in broad generalities. You don't you don't just you don't beat around the bush in the, endlessly. No, you talk about real things. You talk about real life. You tell stories about what has actually happened in the past and what we what you've seen in the past, and you make sense of the things that are going on in your life. And this is praying our experience with God. God wants us to talk to Him and listen to Him about the specific things that are going on in our lives. Look, if you look here in the verse, you find, I mean, they are name specific. They say, Herod. Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, which meant a specific group of people, the people of Israel that meant a specific group of people. These people are praying and talking to God in real terms. And that's what God wants us to do. I'd like to say, that, that, you know, a couple of things and, and just principles. Let, let's just go to principles on praying our experience in light of God's Word. That first principle, I've already said it, is to be specific. And I'll say here that if, if you want to say it to God, then you probably shouldn't say it at all. Now that, that, that stings a little bit, and it should. But at the same time, we don't have to hold anything back from God. Now, God is a God of reverence. He's a God of judgment. He's a God that should be feared. We should respect Him. So we shouldn't come to God in a haphazard way. At the same time, God is, has a close, intimate relationship with each one of us, if you know Him. He knows our thoughts. He knows our feelings. The, the number of hairs on our head. He knows that. I mean, He knows us intimately. So you really can't hold anything back from God. He already knows what you're thinking. So when we go to God and we try to make a sense of our experience and, and our circumstances in light of God's Word, we need to just drop the pretense and be specific. We need to pray for people by name. First and foremost, we need to pray for people. And I believe there's something extremely powerful about calling out people's name before the Lord. See, we don't always know what that person needs, but the Holy Spirit does. 
And the Spirit helps in our weakness so that when we don't know even what to pray, He prays for us. He prays on our behalf. So sometimes, and I think, not even sometimes, I think it is super powerful to simply say, God, I'm just going to intercede on behalf of this person and call their name out. In prayer. The second is to talk with God about what you really think is happening. To be honest, get specific, talk to God about what you really think is happening and the things that you're praying about. Now realize you could be wrong. <laughs> and I know that's a that's a I considered this one as I was preparing for the message. You know, God wants us to be completely honest with Him. He wants us to drop our pretense. He wants us to tell Him what we really think. But we also need to be careful to have the humility to know and understand that we may very well be wrong about what we're saying. But the cool thing about that, and as we're going to see about the grace that this early church had, is we're going to talk about that next week. God's grace is so sufficient in our weakness even in our pride, that we don't have to worry about saying the wrong thing. We don't have to worry about saying or doing or having the, the, the wrong attitudes going on because if we're a child of God and we're sold out to His purpose, He will lovingly show us and guide us into all truth, into the way, the truth and the life that He is. He will show us and guide us. So we can be honest with God and we can be specific. The third or the next one is to remember that God is in total control. As we share these experiences, we can, we can have a tendency to, to, to be consumed or to be encompassed by those experiences. And we have to remember that God transcends our experiences. That just means that He is in complete control. And you'll notice a pattern here, but the other principle is to listen. Just like as we pray God's Word, we want to listen. When we start to work through our experiences with God, we also want to give time to listen and to process. Remember, a prayer is a conversation and conversations as we look at verse 20, verses 29 and 30, we'll find that the early church prayed also their heart's desire. Look what they continued to pray in verse 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats. They say, look, we, they, they're threatening us. They, they, they're not, again, not beating around the bush. They're saying, God, take note of their threats. And grant your bondservants, that's the church, that your bondservants may speak your word with all confidence. They're, they're, they're praying their heart's desire. Their heart's desire is that God sees what they're facing. That they feel that companionship with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus. That that fellowship of persecutions as they face this very first persecution they say they say look god what, 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 what we're dealing with but notice very clearly that they do not then immediately ask that 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 go away or that that or that or that some command be made that that, that those people turn around and that and that this stuff ends that's not what they pray they don't pray that the persecutions will end what do they pray that they may speak the Word, His Word, God's Word, with all confidence. The desire of their heart is to proclaim God to the people they have an opportunity to be. Look at verse 30. The other desire of their heart. While you extend your hand to heal, and signs and wonders take place through the name of of your holy servant, Jesus. The early church's heart, their, their heart's desire, was also to see the power of God at work in the world. So they prayed that. 
They don't pray. They don't pray, God, do something with those people who threaten. They, they want God to know about it. They, they talk to Him about it. But, but their main concern is not that. It's that they proclaim God's Word in the face of those threats. And it's that as they do that, God's power is shown to the world. I just want to ask you this morning, is that your heart's desire? I've been asking since that point in the message. I've been asking myself that all week. I do want to proclaim God's Word with boldness. I, I do want to walk through the difficult situations that are bound to come. I, I want to walk through them faithfully. But is it my true heart's desire to truly see the power of God unleashed? And as I considered that this week, you know what I came to? That it is. And if there's a war with my flesh and with the powers of darkness and with the, the direction of the world and, and society that doesn't want the power of God unleashed in this, in this society. But, but let me give you something to think about. This is where God spoke to me on. Think about the people who you know who don't know God, who don't know the free pardon of sin, and are therefore living in darkness. Who are therefore running away from God. Who are therefore, if they died today, would not go to heaven, but instead would go to hell. Think about those people really hard and then answer the question, did you want to see God's healing hand and miraculous power at work in this earth? If you're like me, you do. Because I have friends, I have family members who don't know the Lord. I want to see them come to know Him. And the most important part I would say about that whole thing is to pray for those people. And I do, and I know you do too. Search deep there and ask God to give you that heart's desire. Also, we're in the middle of this pandemic. Do you want to see God's healing hand? Or do you want to see God's restore, restoration at work? And we, don't get me wrong. We should never idolize those things. We should never look for those things uh, for man's glory by any means. And we should never put the cart before the horse, so to speak. We should never put that as the thing. Healing or restoration or even other people's salvation, though that is that is key to disciple making. No, our worship, our faith is in God Himself, as the early churches were. But it is very real for Christ followers, for believers, to want to see God at work. Is that your heart's desire? Is that your heart's desire? We should pray our heart's desire for the uh, before the Lord, and we should expect Him to answer. As Psalm thirty-seven four says, "Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart." And we've talked about that before. That's not your worldly desires. That's not your fleshly desires. That's your true heart's desire as a believer and a changed person with the Holy Spirit of God living in. It's a common family controversy, I think, in most families, and that is, what do you want to eat, right? What do you want to eat? And 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 somebody, one person can say, well, what do you want to eat tonight? And the other, I don't know. And so, so no, nobody really says, mostly because they're not in touch with what they actually want. And what happens? Usually, the one that is in touch, the one that does says, they get rejected, right? Because the first person then that makes a, a suggestion, the other people are like, nah, we don't want that tonight, right? So you end up riding around or sitting around talking in circles because no one really knows or is willing to say what they actually want. In that way, God doesn't want us to be like that. God is asking us. God tells us, keep seeking, keep asking, keep knocking. He says, a father, won't, a father if, 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 if his son asks for bread, won't give him a stone, will he? 
If he asks for fish, he won't give him a snake, will he? No. We have a good Father who desires for us to pray. And I believe we see these principles this morning as that we can pray in God's Word, that we can pray our experience and, and talk through and process our experience, experience in light of God's Word and in light of who God is and then express our true heart's desire to the Lord. I've given you principles on the first two, and I just want to give you a couple of principles on this last one, praying our heart's desire to God. The first is to be honest about our heart's desire or situation. Be honest to ourselves and to God. Then to consider that true desire against again against God's Word and against the purpose of God and ask, is that a fleshly desire or is that my desire? desire of truth is that God in me desiring that outcome and then give God room to adjust our desires that's the hard part right that's the hard part that, that goes back to that considering pouring our heart out to God and, and being real with him and considering that we may be wrong because many times we will be, because we will be led by the flesh at times. And prayer is that way to readjust us. So allow God to adjust. God's grace is real even for our pride. And if we'll give Him just a little bit of room, He'll shine that grace in you, soften us, soften our hearts. But like a a good friend, like a good father, like the sovereign God, who He is, the power of the universe, we have to be willing to say, God, you're God, and I'm not. So if I need to readjust, please readjust me. The next one is to ask God for what we really want what we really desire truly express those desires and like the first two the last principle with this one is to listen and see how god answers because that may be very well may be how he adjusts those desires he may give us an answer or a partial answer or not an answer and help us to see wait a minute god i, I know i wanted this and i'm so thankful for your grace because now i see what i really needed was there God desires our true prayers, our true companionship. So I hope this is helpful in prayer, and I hope you'll practice some of these principles this week. And I want to practice some of these principles right now. As we are going to end this time or respond to this message as we do each week with the Lord's Supper, with Holy Communion, the Bible tells us to examine ourselves and I want to invite us to examine ourselves this morning and to be real with God we we are here around his word in light of his word in, in agreement that his word is truth we're standing firm on his word and we are here in real time today in the midst of circumstances and experiences going on and our hearts are to see God work in, in mighty ways. Our hearts, are, I don't know what's on your heart, and there are things on my heart this morning. We've expressed earlier in the service uh, for our brothers and sisters in Christ and our church, we've expressed these things to God. And in just a few moments, we're going to participate in a memorial where we remember how we were able to come to God, how we are able to come to God, what our basis for coming to God is, and that is the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I want to invite you for a few moments of reflection to examine yourself in light of God's Word, to examine your circumstances right now in light of God's Word and what He's drawing you to do and to examine your desires and ask Him to change us, to make us more like Him. And as we do this, let's prepare our hearts 
to relate to our Lord on the basis of sacrifice for our sins. I'll give you just a few moments for reflection. The body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out in the sins of humanity. Lord, we come to you on the basis of this sacrifice that was made to us. And on the basis that we believe in this, that you sent your son, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he rose again, and that he sent the Holy Spirit to help us, to comfort us, and for us to accomplish your mission on this earth, which is to make yourself known, to make disciples, that your love and restoration be known. We present ourselves for this work, and we ask you to adjust our thoughts, to adjust our desires, to adjust our plans. We invite you, Lord. We submit to you to do your work and have your way in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I like to say just blessings, that I'm praying for you, and that I hope that we will all follow the Lord wherever he sends us and in him whatever he calls us to do until we meet again.